Ultimately, all that the devil is trying to do is going to fail. We know that sometimes it doesn't feel like it. Uh, uh, you know, Jesus, be, you know, being dragged to the cross looked like defeat. But three days later, he rose from the dead and totally crushed the enemy, totally took dominion. And in Daniel, the same book that we quoted over and over again, we have this great uh, vision in, Jan in Daniel chapter 2, where uh, Daniel sees a stone uh, that was uh, cut out with no hands uh, fly into this statue and land on its toes and break it into pieces and those uh, 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 those toes or the feet of that statue represent the kingdom of the antichrist and all of the other previous kingdoms and his kingdom were dismantled were blew away in the wind like chaff and that stone grew and grew and grew and became a mountain. And this symbolized the kingdom of Christ is coming and it is going to so outdo all the previous kingdoms that we are literally going to forget what it was like back in the day. This is a God thing. This is God's great reset. God is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. There's going to be the rapture, then Christ coming back, then the millennial rule where Jesus is physically on earth for a thousand years. But after that, the Bible clearly teaches us that God is going to reset the world it's his great reset so what they're trying to do here is a counterfeit God is going to get rid of this earth he's going to get rid of the heavens uh, or, or the realms above us and he's going to done with them and bring forth a new one and press reset this is a wonderful wonderful thing he's going to we're going to come back to a good the bible describes it as a good and righteous environment and filled with people who want to be there right with with this particular reset that we're talking about if it pans out the way they intend it to pan out there'll be a lot of people that are there but don't want to be there but in God's great reset, every single individual there wants to be there, can't wait to be there and, and, and is anticipating being there. The Bible says, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. Think about the implications of that. God is saying everything that came before that, once I do my great reset, it won't be remembered. OK, the Bible says, but we are looking forward to God's promise of new heavens and a new earth afterwards where this is where I got it from before. There will only be goodness where there will be only goodness. This is wonderful news. This is great news. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth where there will only be goodness. Other Bible versions say where there will only be righteousness. God is going to do this. When you say one day I'm going to be in heaven, I'm going to be with the Lord. This is what we're talking about. This is when it's done. There's no more demons, no more devils, no more sicknesses, nothing. It's all done and we are finally in heaven. Some of you probably don't know who this gentleman is, right? His name is Charles Dutton. Charles Dutton. He's a famous actor. What people don't know about Charles Dutton is that he was an ex-con. He actually murdered someone many, many years ago when he was younger. Um, and, uh, you know, it was manslaughter, but, you know, he took someone's life. And then uh, he got released after, I think, a number of years, then ended up doing some more foolishness with guns, was back in prison. Then whilst he was in prison, he he knocked out a security guard, then got eight, his three-year uh, stint to, got turned into eight years. And whilst he was in prison, he found a book on acting when because they put him in, in solitary confinement for some foolishness he did he's reading this book and he fell in love with the arts and so when he came out of solitary confinement he asked the wardens if he could start like a drama club uh, you know in the prisons and when he finally came out he managed to make his, his his way into into acting and so people asked him in interviews afterwards you know when people are in and out of prison like you mr charles dutton they don't tend to end up being uh, rehabilitated right they, they they end up the rest of their lives going in and out of prison so why is it different for you how come you got out made it out stayed out and made a name for yourself and listen to what uh, uh, mr dutton said all the time that i was in prison i never decorated my cell because prison is not my home his mindset was this is not my home so i'm not going to decorate it my mind and my heart is beyond the walls of this prison and many christians unfortunately uh, folks that we, we don't think like that we decorate our prison 
We put pictures up in our prison. We want to invest in our prison. We want to uh, grow in our prison. Charles Dutton is, is, is teaching us something and he's saying, listen, this is not our home, but we settle here. Our affections are here. What makes us happy are the affairs of life. But God is speaking to you and I and saying, I have a plan for a great reset. Now, I want to talk to you about heaven, right? Heaven is a, uh, uh, in the Old Testament, is a Hebrew word, uh, a shamim, and it literally means the high. That's what the, the word heaven means in the original language. It means the high. It's talking about the vast expanse or space over us and above the skies in the universe. It also speaks about the unseen mystery of where the creator resides. Uh, when I say those words, it fills me with excitement because this is what heaven is. It's where God is, is where he resides. That place is, 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 is where we belong by God's grace as citizens. I, I'm, a, I'm a British citizen. I'm a Zimbabwean citizen. Uh, I have my little documents to kind of show that. But in reality, both physically and spiritually, you and I are both citizens of heaven. And that is far greater and has in tremendous implications, real and real implications as well. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is where our citizenship is. We ought to be thinking about that and preparing for that because that ultimately is going to be our home. And so we want to talk uh, this evening about God's great reset. God's great reset. Uh, the world right now needs a reset. Not the way the elites are planning, but the way God is planning. Okay, so let's look at some of the ways that God is going to reset the world. Currently, as you live tomorrow morning, when you wake up around six, seven o'clock, the sun is going to come out and you're going to see it, it, it move and, and the, the, the skies are literally going to change color over a period of time and, and, and the, there's going to be light everywhere and that sun gives us light, that sun gives us life. And then after a number of hours, it goes uh, away again and then darkness fills our night. The way the world is right now is we have a sun, but when God does his reset, there will be no sun. The new earth and the new heaven will have no sun. Revelation chapter 21 verse 23. And the city has no need of the sun, nor of the moon to give light to it. For the glory, the splendor, the radiance of God has illumined it. And the lamp is its lamp and light. This is amazing to me. When God does his thing, uh, uh, the new earth won't have a sun, right? Uh, 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 there won't be the sun and the moon and the stars as we know it. I don't know how it's going to look. All I know is that the text says there is no sun. What's going to give us light and luminance is Christ himself, is our creator. God himself is going to be that brightness. If you read in Revelations, of, I believe this is chapter 21, it also tells us that there will be no more night time right there'll be no more uh, uh, going to sleep you can be up 24 hours a day now for those who love their sleep and and you love your little lions and 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 dreaming and resting uh, i want to tell you now if you're a citizen of the great reset that god has planned for us uh, then get ready because no more lions and no more sleeping you're going to be so energized by life so thrilled by what you're seeing that you're going to want to, to to be awake every moment of the day to take it all in and to enjoy it and guess what you're going to enjoy it forever for an eternity just when you think you're getting used to something god's going to add something else god's going to uh because he's infinite we'll always be learning always be growing always be yearning and always in his marvelous light in the world that we live in now if i want to travel to see my grandmother in zimbabwe i have to fly over an ocean the uh, uh, continents are separated by seas and oceans and lakes and all these kind of stuff but revelation chapter 21 again tells us that in god's great reset there will be no oceans uh, whatever the earth is going to look like the new earth the, the reset earth 
It won't have any oceans. There are implications to that. That means people won't be separated anymore. That means there won't be any fear anymore because the ancient Greeks and Jews feared the seas and the unknown and uh, because they didn't have the technology. And so when they heard no more seas, it meant no more in, uh, uh, fears and no more apprehensions. It means so much. But in the new earth that God is going to reset, there will be no more seas and oceans in genesis chapter 3 uh, the world that we live in right now god cursed the land god cursed adam god cursed eve because of their sin and what they've done and those curses have affected us all throughout the generations up to to this day we're still feeling it some of you are going to work and you don't enjoy what you do you don't love what you do but you do it out of necessity out of toil and sweat that is a curse when women give birth there is pain there is oh, oh Listen, read Genesis chapter 3 and, and, um, and acquaint yourself with what God did and what God said. And you will notice that we are still seeing those effects today. Well, in the Great Reset, when God starts again, when God gives us a new heaven and a new earth, the Bible tells us there will be no more curses. That means whatever you find your hands to do, you're going to love, you're going to enjoy, and nature itself is going to work hand in hand with you to bring out the fruits of your labor as opposed to working against you. God removes the curse. We live right now within a reality of life and death. We instinctively know that everyone is going to die at some point that there is that this world is plagued with death relationships die people die finances die homes die schools die nations die uh, there's death everywhere but when God does his great reset there will be no more death everyone who lives everyone who is a citizen of heaven and earth in the new reset will be there forever no more death and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will no longer be death. There will no longer be sorrow and anguish or crying or pain for the former order of things has passed away. This is God looking into the future and he can see us uh, no longer in, in pain, no longer crying. The former things are gone. The old system, what, what the, the elites and the billionaires are trying to do, God is going to undo and we will no longer remember it. I, I remember when I was a teenager, I blinked. Then I was in my 20s. I blinked again. Then I was in my 30s. In February, I'm going to be uh, 40 years old. And so time is going quick. As much as we're speaking about it right now, I want to tell you now, sooner than you realize, sooner than you think, in a blink of an eye, you are going to be there. You and I are going to experience God's great reset. And so I want to talk uh, about, uh, secondly, what makes heaven so great? What makes heaven so amazing? Apart from these things we've just already seen. Number one, or I think the only thing that really makes heaven amazing is God is going to be there. We are going to be with him forever. Christ is going to be there. That is what makes heaven amazing. It's not the city made of gold. It's not the new heaven and the new earth. It's not God's kingdom finally ruling. It's not the absence of, of sin and pain and death. It's a fact that God is going to be there. And the reason why this makes me excited and should make you a citizen also excited is that our experiences of God sometimes are very limited and very frustrated. What I mean by that is some of you are desiring to get to know God more and and you feel like you're light years away from where you ought to be. You, you, you're craving the presence of God in your life. You're reading books and you're praying and you're yearning for God to speak to you. And sometimes God does minister to you, maybe through a sermon or through a word or in your heart. And it's a glimpse, a, a shadow of what is to come. And those glimpses and shadows are, are, are excite us because we see the miraculous in that. Uh, but but when we get there, we, we won't need any more powerful service. When we get there, we won't need any more words or blessings or miracle or signs. We won't need any more representations of what heaven or what God is like. We won't need any more illustrations. We won't need any more. Uh, we won't be having any more glimpses into God's presence. No more metaphors, no more parables, no more prophecies. It will be clear as day. We'll be able to see him, speak to him, fellowship with him. Uh, whatever heaven has in store for us, we are going 
strength and get to do it together as brothers, beloved brothers and sisters, but more importantly with him, without pretense, without a veil, without a, a, a you know a, 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 a obscurity, it's going to be it's going to be crystal clear. And we get that idea from First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse twelve. The Bible says in the same way we can see and understand only a little about God now as if we were peering at his reflection in a poor mirror. But someday we're going to see him in his completeness. That's amazing. Face to face. I, I, I hope someone at their home right now is saying hallelujah, praise God. That's amazing. Now all that I know is hazy and blurred, but then I will see everything clearly, just as clearly as God sees into my heart right now. As God understands me and as God sees me and into my heart right now, I'll be able to see and understand just as him. Uh, th there'll be a clarity, there'll be a face-to-face, -face, however Whatever that uh, uh, looks because we know that God is spirit whatever he uh, it's going to be amazing that's that's the point I'm making no more church buildings right no more zoom meetings no more bible commentaries to try and figure out the greek and the hebrew no more thousands of books to try and make sense of some biblical truths it's going to be you and i as citizens of that coming kingdom citizens of god's great reset rejoicing and and, and fellowshipping with him in clarity talking about heaven john said i saw no temple in it for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. There is no place that you need to go and worship and, and, and find a location and gather together. Listen, he's going to be everywhere and we're going to experience him and the former things are going to fade away. Heaven is where God is. It's his throne the bible says so that word for what it's 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 a, it's a human word trying to paint a picture of a spiritual truth and we understand from thrones thrones is a, a, a where kings sit and rule from so the location of heaven is the location of the space that god occupies or or, or has made his headquarters for those who uh, 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 come to him and acknowledge him and from there he rules and has dominion it's where he makes decisions the bible says it's where he receives your prayers, the Bible says. It's where Jesus is going, he said to his disciples, and making a house or home for him and coming back to receive his people and bring us back to heaven. That's where Jesus is. He's seated at the right hand of the Father and he said he will make a place for us. Heaven is the center of everything. Jesus called heaven my Father's house. And since you, believer, are a child of God, his home is your home. Jesus's house is your house. It's more than just land. It's more than just a space or a location. It's more than just something somewhere that's beautiful and fantastic and amazing. It is home. This, my friend, is not your home. So don't worry about what the elites and the billionaires are doing because it is appointed for a man to die once and then we enter into eternity. Then we enter into our true inheritance, our true home. Heaven is where the heart is. In heaven, there will be no more death and no more suffering. The, these are the things that you won't find in heaven. You won't find funeral homes in heaven. You won't find abortion clinics or psychiatric wards. Psych, psychiatric wards. You know what I'm talking about. There's no rape in heaven. There's no missing children in heaven. There are no drugs or rehabilitation centers in heaven. There's no bigotry. There's no muggings. There's no murder or killings. There's no worry in heaven. There is no economic crime crashes or depression in heaven. There is no uh, uh, wars or unemployment in heaven. There's no stresses in heaven. There are no anguish in heaven. There is no anguish in heaven. There's no failures in heaven. There is no misunderstanding between people, no miscommunication, no double speak, no talking behind people's back. You won't find any con men in heaven. You won't find any locks on people's doors. You won't find uh, mourning or pain or boredom in heaven. Hallelujah. You won't find arthritis or handicaps you won't find cancer you won't find tax bills you won't find computer crashes there's no weeds there's no bombs no drunkenness there's no traffic jams there are no accidents in heaven there's no sept septic tanks there's no mental illness listen heaven is beautiful there's there's no unwanted emails in heaven 
And we can go on and on and on. This is what the kingdom of man and the kingdom of Satan has set up. This is how we live today. But oh, brother and sister, there is coming a time when God is going to bring his great reset. And it's going to be so powerful and so amazing. It will literally eclipse every other kingdom before that. There are close relationships in heaven. Closer closer than you have now, but no, with no clicks, no uh, segregated groups. Everyone will know each other. Everyone will love each other. There'll be laughter without any put downs. There'll be intimacy in heaven, but without temptation or jealousy or immorality. There'll be no hidden agen- agendas in, in heaven. There's no backroom deals in heaven. There are no betrayals in heaven. There are meal times that are filled with stories and joy and laughter without fear of being too insensitive to someone else. There is no inappropriate behavior in heaven there's no anger in heaven there's no gossip no lust there's no jealousy no one's feelings are going to be hurt there's no tea Mm. hallelujah in heaven there's nothing there that's ever going to take away from your joy there is nothing there that's ever going to be able to take away from your grace uh, filled happiness you're always going to be growing in knowledge of Christ and after a thousand years you're only scratching the surface after a million years you're only just getting to know him after 10 billions and billions of years you're like wow God is so big and so vast and our joy is only ever going to increase so think about about that for all eternity our experience is only going to improve over and over and over and over again that my friends is the great reset that you and I should look forward to that will be heaven a satisfaction and a wonder that grows more and more over time how then should we live all right since you have been raised to new life with Christ set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Now, before I continue reading on to the next bit, I hope you, 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 you're, you're marking your Bible right now. If you have a highlighter, uh, uh, mark it that right there. If you don't have one, grab one real quick. Set your sights on the realities of heaven. This is the encouragement that we receive from the Bible. Look at what God is going to do. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you shall share in all his glory. Think on things above. Think about heaven. Think about those realities. Everything I've said to you, let your mind soak into that. If you don't do that, you are going to be decorating your prison. Number one, remember that this is not your home. Everything that we have here is temporary. That means, and and listen, this is an encouragement. That means any joy that you experience on earth is temporary, but the opposite is also true. Any suffering and pain you experience on the earth is also temporary. All of it is like a, 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 a grass that's here today, gone tomorrow. Life, the Bible says, is a vapor. We're here, boom, and we're gone. So all of the things that we experience in that click compared to the great vastness of eternity is nothing. So we invest so much on this earth that we forget about the joy that we had. We, we get so discouraged about the little things that happened, the, the little disappointments, the little setbacks uh, that, that, that happened in that click that we forget about the expanse of eternity. Listen, remember, number one, this is not your home. This prison is not your home, right? Romans chapter eight, verse 18. The Bible says, yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will give us later. What we're going through now, what you are seeing now, what you're experiencing now in the flesh, uh, in your finances, in your family, in your mental health, uh, in, in your spiritual walk even, all of the ups and downs of life. This verse, Romans 8, 18, tells us that is nothing. It is a blip in the radar compared to the glory that's going to be revealed later on in eternity. So, like Christ, when he says uh, these, these very famous words, do not let your heart be troubled. 
don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm going to my father's house and I prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be. And if I make a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself that you and I will spend eternity together. This promise is sealed. This promise is what God says to the citizens of heaven. Number two, you can influence your future. You can influence what's going to happen on the other side of the great reset again in that blip in that short breath that we call life the things that you do now will influence what will happen later jesus told us very clearly he said store up for yourselves treasures where in heaven in other words as you are storing treasures in heaven you have a heavenly mindset you are setting your future your eyes on the things ahead and you're saying this is not my home i'm going to use my talents i'm going to use my time i'm going to use my treasures to set myself up for the future i'm a patriot for for the kingdom of heaven and i show that by how i live that means you and i have to live in light of eternity some will make heaven but they will be ashamed when they get there I want to I want to show you this from scripture. If you have your Bibles, 1 John chapter 2, verse 28. And now, my little children, stay happy, stay in happy fellowship with the Lord, so that when he comes, you will be sure that all is well, and you will not have to be ashamed and shrink back from meeting him that is a very scary verse of scripture because of the implications that there are some that may make heaven but in the initial contact with christ will shrink back from him because they are ashamed of decorating their prison they are ashamed of the time that they use to invest in a world that's only going to be reset anyway they're ashamed of their prayer life ashamed of their bible devotions ashamed that they never witnessed they were saved for years and never shared their faith once or maybe they did it once or twice and kind of gave up and and, and, and i want to encourage you this evening church use your life for the glory and for the furtherance of the kingdom of god whatever that may mean whether you're coming on outreach or you're witnessing to people at your workplace or schools whether you're going out on the streets by yourself with a hand hand, with, with, with some flyers on a tuesday night a friday night whatever be a christian 24 hours a day and set yourself up influence the future have a comfortable meeting with christ number three be thankful that you are spared be thankful that you are a citizen of heaven i know things may not be the way they should be i know we may be apprehensive about some of the things that are coming up in the future but i am glad and i am grateful that i am a citizen of heaven i should not have got the green card to the kingdom of heaven i should not have been given that pass to go into there because i was broken and sinful i did things i'm ashamed of things i may never repeat over the pulpit but christ in his grace and mercy made it so that i became a citizen of his home of his kingdom and i am grateful you ought to be grateful and number four i close with this god is still in control we don't have everything figured out we don't know how things are going to work out but we do know that god is in control We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. God is in control. In heaven, there are no elections. In heaven, they don't pass power down from from one term to the next. There is only one sovereign ruler. There's only one creator, only one God, one lamb, one lion, one king of the tribe of Judah. His name is Jesus and he is in control. He has defeated the enemy. Satan is under your feet. You but speak a word and demons have to flee when you mention the name of Jesus when you call upon your father you have faith to move mountains listen your God is in control the Bible says that no eye has seen no ear has heard no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him and obey him God is in control oh but the vaccines I just don't know this poison and God is in control but who's going to win the election and Boris's hair is, is losing his hair? God is in control. <laughs> whatever you may see on YouTube or Facebook, whatever, whatever disappointing you, 
God is in control. This is the anchor. So this is how we, we live life. We remember, hey, this is not my home. I, I, I don't belong. I'm not a citizen on earth. We remember that the way I live will influence my future. So I want to be about my father's business. I don't know about you. As for me and my house, hey, we want to be our, about our father's business. Number three, I'm grateful. God, thank you. Thank you for making me a citizen, for washing me away from my sins. And I rest in the fact that he is in control. Do you know what that means? It means I can read the news. I can see what's happening in the world and though others may be disturbed by it, meh, God's in control. God would lead us and direct us. Sometimes we have to fight, right? Sometimes we have to, 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 to do more than just sign a petition. Sometimes we have to voice the kingdom of God and, and go against the grain. But hey, God's in control. God is in control. The elites of this world think that they're in control, but they're not. So, how do you get to heaven? Are you ready for the real great reset? Not this fake one, the real one. Are you ready? Because those who aren't ready will not see everything that I've just described. I thank God that he made it so simple that even a child can understand. Even a child can understand. Jesus Christ in eternity past in the Godhead, God decided I'm going to create man. He knew beforehand that man was going to fall, but he gave us a way out. He gave us a solution. Initially in the Old Testament, it was about holding on with the law to reveal just how far away from God we are when we compare ourselves to the law. But it was all leading up to one point. The whole Bible is about one person, Jesus. Everything in the Old Testament points to Jesus and his arrival in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Everything after that is all about Jesus pointing to his return at the rapture and his physical second coming. It's all about Christ. And why is it all about him? Because of what he did on the cross. We're all sinners. We've all fallen short of God's glory. God gave us Christ. You cannot ask God for forgiveness without acknowledging Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one, no one gets to the Father except by or through me. If you want to be a citizen of heaven, you have to go through Christ because Jesus took on all of our sins on himself. Every lie, every glance at uh, with lust, every theft, every blaspheme, every disrespect, every unclean thing that we've ever done, said or thought, Jesus took the full punishment, the full weight of it on himself so that you can receive his righteousness. It's you don't you you become a citizen of heaven not because of your works. You become a citizen of heaven not because of your religion. You become a citizen of heaven not because of what your parents have done or what others think of you. You become a citizen of heaven when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. You turn from your sin and you live for him. You pursue him you love him as a result of that uh, of, uh, of what he has done in your heart that is how you become a citizen of heaven by acknowledging sin and receiving accepting the the savior of your soul and and, and god has made this possible for every single person including you so all you need to do is pray go onto your knees and acknowledge god i need you I've said things, that, Lord, I need you. Forgive me. Wash me clean. For uh, 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 If Christ died for me, let me be counted as, uh, as, as part of that number. I need you in my life. And the Bible, Jesus said, you must be born again. You must be born again. And this is what happens when we acknowledge Christ and we give our lives and our hearts to him. When we obey the commandment, God says he commands all men everywhere to repent. When we come to Christ with that heart, you will be born again and heaven will be your home. Anything you do after that is a result of your love for God, not fear of missing out on heaven. And I hope that makes sense. I want to encourage you, get in touch with us if you need any more clarification about this because we're living in very critical times. We may not have all the time we think we have to get things right. I also want to encourage you to share this message, to, 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 to click the share button right now, save the link and send it out to as many people as you can. Uh, uh, show them the Great Reset first and then show them this one second and let people know that there is a God in heaven who is waiting for their names to be written in, their, in the book of life. But my friends and my sisters, my brothers and sisters, time is short. The axe is at the root. Produce fruit, therefore, worthy of repentance. Come to Christ and experience love like you have never experienced before. God's great 
reset. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. I pray that that message uh, was helpful.